we're emotional creatures and our emotions drive us to do things that don't make a lot of sense. People tend to buy at the high points in asset cycles and they tend to sell at the low point. Hi everybody, David and Drew with Nighthawk Equity here. If you want to be as informed as possible with your investment, you need to understand what liquidity is and how it relates to real estate investing. Drew, can you tell us a little bit more about what liquidity is? Yeah, sure, David. Great topic. So liquidity is essentially defined as the ability to turn any asset into cash. And the easier something, uh, easier it is to do that, the more liquid a, uh, an asset class is. So the short answer is no, real estate is not a liquid investment. But there's a catch. And the catch is that that's actually a good thing. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. So is this inherently considered a good thing? Obviously, the answer is yes. So why is that the case when it relates to real estate investments? Yeah, the, the common sense is that people want to have liquid investments. They want to be able to convert things to cash if they need to, right? And so that's one reason why people have been in the stock market for so long, because the stock market, it's like, oh, you can press the sell button and someone you know, sells your ownership in a company and you convert it to cash. The reality, though, and the data is that this is not a good thing to be liquid in investments. And the reason is because we have emotions. We're emotional creatures, and our emotions drive us to do things that don't make a lot of sense. People tend to buy at the high points in asset cycles, and they tend to sell at the low point in asset cycles. And if you want any proof on that, just look at the housing crash in 2008. Right, all the years building up to it, when there's this giant bubble building and things were super expensive, people were buying left and right. And then right afterwards, when there was a crash and every single home, every single apartment building was effectively on sale, people were scared and they didn't want to. And so they were acting with their emotions and they were buying at high and they were selling at low. So the illiquidity in real estate is actually a benefit because it prevents you from making those emotional decisions that in the long term uh, can hurt your financial well-being. Now, that's all great information, but what I'm wondering is, do you have any hard data to kind of demonstrate this? Yeah, absolutely, I do, right. So um, I posted this on my, on my Instagram, but uh, back in September of 21, there was some great data about the 20-year average of the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is like a mixture of stocks, right? And the average return in the S&P 500, if you bought it, but January 1st, and then 20 years later, you sold it on December 31st. The average return was 7.7%. But what type of financial performance did the average investor experience? And the average investor got 4.8%. Why is that? Because they bought when it was high and they sold when it was low. So even though the market performed at a certain rate, the average investor experienced about 50% or 60% of that rate because their emotions got in the way. So my thought is stick with illiquid assets that don't let you have your emotions influence your investments. All right, thanks so much, Drew. If you're, if you're watching this and you're interested in investing passively with Nighthawk and you have not already scheduled a call with me, please do so by visiting nighthawkequity.com forward slash call. And I look forward to speaking with you. Thank you so much. We'll catch you on the next episode.